So here we are on another red carpet. So, Marissa, yes. a year ago, yes. we were at the Soho International Film Festival. I know. And you're first online with Fran again. Yes. So let's talk about what your year has been like and how the journey has taken you back home here to Northport. Wow, it has been full circle from festivals to interviews to press, TV. And let's not forget you winning the Best Actor Award. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Best Actress Award, Grace has won, Best Drama, Raising Awareness Awards. I mean, just the overwhelming support and generosity surrounding the film has really been truly amazing. And we've been featured numerous times in First Online with Fran and all of your support has just been tremendous and really telling the story that we can celebrate recovery and we can tell stories based on our life experiences. So it's just been so wonderful to be able to share it with people and to share it with you. Has that dream been realized? Oh yes, it has. And I feel like tonight, screening here at the Angerman Theater in Northport is the culmination of that. I'm so amazed. Every time I screen the film, people come up to me, they want to share their stories, talk about their own experiences, what they're going through. And so it's to be able to share it tonight with a sold out house and everyone here to have that conversation, I just feel is really kind of what, what all of this was for. The arts gives permission, people permission to have the conversation. It gives them the confidence to know that they're not alone in what they're going through in their life. So I'm so grateful for the opportunity to tell these stories, to move people. And we are so grateful to you and to your movie, Grace. Continue to success and all the best. Thank you. My name is Kevin O'Neill. I'm the owner of the John Engerman Theater in Northport. And uh, we're happy to be hosting uh, tonight's event uh, to try to raise awareness for the uh, Drug and Alcohol Task Force with a great premiere of the movie Grace. Well, from day one when we, when we bought the theater, uh, it was named after my brother-in-law John Engerman who was killed in Iraq just at the time we bought the theater. We would said we would run it and with a percentage of the proceeds we would try to fund not-for-profits in the area. Um, last week we cost a million dollars in the first nine years years that we've either directly or indirectly raised for not-for-profits. Um, so that's kind of I mean, our, a lot of our mission in terms of what we're doing. Um, as far as this specific cause, this event, uh, it attracted me because it would be great in a theater setting for the young woman to have uh, her, her film presented here. But, you know, I have four children of my own, um, 24, 21, and two that are 19. And fortunately, they've avoided the, uh, the, the tragedies of what people have come across between alcoholism and drug drug, uh, drug addiction and um, you know I think it's this wasn't it didn't exist this way when I was in high school or college it's just things are different and it's a uh, it's 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 far worse than it used to be uh, the kids are great nowadays but unfortunately it's not just kids it's people of all different ages that have these problems and uh, we just felt it'd be a great way to help feature uh, a very very talented young lady uh, and also try to support a great cause we're trying to raise awareness about the arts uh, and, and what we do and run in the John Eggerman Theater. Uh, tonight, I looked at it more as, obviously, it's a very creative, talented person that, that, that has documented, I guess, in her own sense, a very short, uh, a powerful film. Um, and But my initial reaction to the night was uh, the, the cause of what we're trying to, you know, con you know trying to help, uh, I guess, educate or inform people about the pitfalls and dangers of alcoholism and, uh, and drug addiction. And, uh, you know, I, so I kind of looked at it more as an evening for it is combined with an arts organization yes it's a great place to feature a film but um, I looked at it more as trying to help out for a cause that people work very very diligently to try to make a difference out there and I applaud everybody's efforts uh, there's people all over this place tonight running around trying to set up everything they can so that they can do whatever they can to try to fund the organization that does a lot of good in the community the arts are, are, are a critical component of our everyday lifestyle and uh, you know I didn't grow up a big theater person and at all. I lived in Flappers, Brooklyn. My parents were, didn't really expose me to theater. I partnered, my wife and I bought the building, partnered with a guy who's who's a brilliant artistic mind, and I've gotten exposed to so many great shows here since we've been open. Um, 
that I had, believe me, I had a good childhood, but that being said, I really wasn't exposed to the arts as much. We played a lot of sports, and I now understand much more the the importance. Uh, but it's it's here to stay. It's not a fl it's not a uh, you know a, a flicker where people are going to say the arts are here, the arts are not. Now, obviously, critical component of our everyday life, and will always be. My name is Scott Norka. I'm part of the task force. I've been a member for about five years now. Uh, we had been talking about doing a fundraiser for some time, and when we met with Marissa Vitale, who wanted to do a film in Northport, uh, the town hall people actually asked if she could work with us and do maybe some sort of uh, event. And as it turned out, we're showing your film and doing this wonderful fundraiser, and all proceeds are going to the YDA. The YDA is moving one of their locations right down here in Main Town. Uh, they're located in East Northport. They also have a satellite office in Greenlawn. They do all types of programs for kids, ranging from, I think, 10 or 11 years old on up to seniors in high school. Uh, different types of programs, such as music, teaching, uh, sports activities, creative activities, art, um, keeping them busy, keeping them off the streets, and helping them to make good decisions. They have counselors on hand for speaking with them and their families. Film is art. Um, uh, Marissa Vitale was actually a person in recovery uh, for some time now. She's been successfully in recovery for a long time. Uh, she started uh, making films and becoming an actor some years ago, and she wanted to come back to Northport and do a film about addiction and all the perils that lie in recovery and how uh, we have to release some of the stigmas that we have about it and so people can make decisions not to use and what to do if they do or if they have families that are involved. Um, it's a big film about decision making, about making correct choices and the paths that you take. But we absolutely need them, if now more than ever. Um, we need to have creative output, outlets other than destructive uh, habits that a lot of people form, both young and old. Senior Airman Gabriel Manzuela. I'm a civil operator for the County Drug Task Force. I'm Staff Sergeant Carissa Canton, and I am a civil operator with the National Guard Counter Drug Task Force. We actually work with the coalition who's sponsoring this event, so we're here to show our support. It's a very well-renowned movie, so that, and along with it being a town forum afterwards, so we want to hear what the community has to say in regards to what issues they're having in this town. We work closely with coalitions throughout Long Island, and uh, Northport is one coalition that we help out. The closest thing to art for me has been music. I mean, I love music and all forms of it. It just keeps me mellow. Personally, I've loved uh, art my entire life. I actually went to school for photography, uh, so I still carry that out uh, in my day-to-day day -to -day, uh, um, day -day activities. Yes, um, and as far as uh, assisting coalitions, um, I do a lot of uh, art design for you know whether they want um, membership cards or they need a, a web design. I'm going to be working on that. Uh, uh, so art really does uh, come in, uh, come into play with our our mission in um, reducing substance abuse in in uh, our our community. I am Irene McLaughlin. I currently serve as the assistant superintendent for human resources. I previously served as the Northport High School principal. Before that, high school assistant principal in Northport. Before that, uh, health education teacher K through 12. So one of the one of the most striking things about this initiative is that it's not just coming from one place, from the school or from the community, it's everybody, it's stakeholders in the community who have come together, business owners, parents, school people, students, faculty at the high school and, and K-12 really, who have come together because everybody can identify with this crisis that's happening to our young people. Um, that, you know, it's a grassroots effort, which is a critical thing, it's, a, it's the Northport way, you know, we love those grassroots efforts and um, you know the power of the people in this community to impact make a change um, is significant so I know that you know tonight is a big night that we'll get a lot of media attention and hopefully we'll be able to strengthen our efforts to save our kids that's what we're looking to do I think the arts are a way for for kids and for people to express themselves and to be able to share who they are and what they're all about and to kind of work through some things that might be challenging for them some students can do that
that with a pencil and paper. Other students can do that on the uh, athletic field. But many of our students really thrive in the area of in areas like the arts, music, art, etc., and expression. That's really, really important for kids. The other thing is that I think that everybody can relate to the arts. So when when the audience comes in and sees our kids, like you know what that's like, Fran, going into the auditorium at Northport High School and hearing the choir sing or seeing the musical. It's un it's extraordinary when you see the students that you pass in the hallway every day or you have in your classroom and you kind of have one perception of them and you see them on stage performing the whole other experience in terms of who that kid is. So the arts are absolutely critical. It not only for each kid to express himself or herself, but for everybody else to kind of connect over the human condition. And that's, that's really very important. That's what I see tonight as. I think that every viewer is going to, to see something different and feel something different and connect to this in a very unique way. My hope is that there are conversations that come from their experiences tonight, the audience's experience and seeing this, and that those conversations will grow into a larger picture of, hey, you know, how did this impact, how did the movie impact you, what does it make you think about, and how does that connect to you moving forward as a developing young person or as a parent or as an educator. The goal is to start the conversation and to never let the conversation stop. Daryl St. George, I'm here to see this wonderful film, Grace, and uh, to support this uh, incredible cause of raising awareness on addiction and substance abuse and hopefully uh, have a little bit of an impact and uh, help some people. I'm a teacher at Northport and an advisor to Project 72, which is a club that's very involved in uh, combating the uh, drug epidemic. The arts are essential, that we need the arts. The arts are uh, what make life worth living. This kind of a film gives meaning to uh, something that uh, some people may have no connection to. And so it, by inspiring some kind of emotion uh, and affecting people, it, it may spur them into action and, and want to get involved and try to help. So I think the arts play an a integral role in uh, addressing this problem. I hope that the film will um, you know, continue to inspire my students who are already taking an active role uh, in uh, working to try to alleviate this problem and, and to bring some healing into the community. I, and I, I, th That's my hope for my students. For me, uh, I'm just really looking forward to seeing the film. I've heard great things about it and uh, I'm, I'm glad that uh, this is uh, another thing that we can use uh, to work to try to um, you know, do something about this terrible epidemic. They were involved in a drug take back. They helped coordinate uh, at four different libraries um, on a Saturday afternoon uh, for people in the community to come out and get rid of their medications, their any kind of drugs that they wanted to get rid of. Um, they helped to organize that. Um, they did a student summit where they invited other school districts to come to Northport to talk about the drug problem. We had a guest speaker there. There was a Narcan training there. Um, it was a, a week of, of events, uh, all designed to try to, uh, you know, again, combat the epidemic. So that's just one of the many things that the kids have been involved in. It goes back to your question about the arts and, and what role do the arts play in all of this. I, I, I like to think that a film like this is going to show people who might have that attitude, although I don't think anybody here really has that attitude. I think everybody here... Listen to the choir. Right exactly, here. exactly. But I would hope that on the off chance that somebody who may have that point of view sees the film, it would connect with them on some level and, and help them to understand that, you know, this is a an insidious uh, disease that uh, knows no boundaries. It, it crosses all lines. It affects all different demographics, wealthy, poor, white, black, um, you know, artists, business person, lawyers, doctors. Uh, and, and my hope is that this film will, will help to continue to raise that kind of awareness. Anthony Ferrandino. I am the chairperson for the North Port East Northport Community Drug and Alcohol Task Force. My plan was really to talk about more of the solution as opposed to the problem. So we, we need to touch on the problem, but we never seem to get past that in, these, in a lot of these community formats. Using the medium like the movie really opens people up. So that was what really what we were hoping for, was that we could have more of a conversation about what can we do and how can we engage the community to just be a part of what the Drug and Alcohol Task Force does, not just on a once a while thing, but every day. Absolutely, they need to have film because it's so important to tap into the arts. I think the film was really about, it showed the struggle. 
that even though she was clean, she was still struggling on a day-to-day -day basis with life on life's terms, and that if you don't start using drugs, you don't have to worry about that. You have more of this free will to make decisions, whereas if you have this monkey on your back or this this thing that you got to worry about, you have to work twice as hard at daily living. Well, I know that what we're hoping to do is continue to have more programs like this. I'm hoping what Marissa does with Grace is bring it to other communities, bring this conversation, use the movie as a medium to have a conversation and to hopefully engage other communities to really start working on this issue as opposed to burying it.